Welcome to my YouTube channel MK Medic Guide Lectures Learning with Artworks like Drawing and Calligraphy. In this video, we will discuss about the parasympathomimetics, also known as cholinomimetics, and their classification and mechanism of action. So, what is parasympathomimetics? Well, the word parasympathomimetic is a combination of two words that is parasympatho and mimetics. So, those drugs which mimic or produce actions like that of parasympathetic nervous system stimulation is called parasympathomimetics. And that's why they are also called parasympathetic agonists. is the parasympathetic nervous system uses acetylcholine as the primary neurotransmitter which is an acetylated choline molecule responsible for all the parasympathetic nervous stimulations. In the same way these agents produce actions like that of acetylcholine. So that's why these agents are also called cholinomimetics or cholinergic agonists because these agents stimulate cholinergic receptors. Parasympathomimetics are basically divided into the direct acting drugs and indirect acting drugs. The direct acting drugs are agonists as the name indicates, these agents bring into being their actions by directly interacting with the cholinergic receptors. While, on the other hand, the indirect acting drugs do not interact with cholinergic receptors directly. But, in contrast, they protect acetylcholine from the enzyme acetylcholine esterase which cause degradation of acetylcholine readily after release. By inhabiting this enzyme, the acetylcholine concentration rises in the synaptic left and stimulate the receptors for a longer period of time. After this, the direct acting agents are further divided into muscarinic agonists, nicotinic agonists, and mixed agonists. The muscarinic agonists are those agents that are only binding to muscarinic receptors and show its action. These include bethanicol, sevimiline, muscarine, and pilocorphine. Here, bethanicol and sevimiline are choline esters, while muscarine and phylocorphine are alkalides. Then, we have the nicotinic agonists, which include agents that only bind to nicotinic receptors and show their actions. These include varinicline, nicotine, and lobulin. In these, the varinicline is a choline ester while the nicotine and lobulin are alkalides. Then we have the mixed agonists, mean these drugs will have agonistic activity on both cholinoceptors, that is muscarinic receptors as well as on nicotinic receptors. These agents include acetylcholine itself, methacholine, and carbacol. After this, we have the indirect acting agents, which are also called anticholine esterase or acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. These are classified as 
reversible and irreversible anticholine esterase agonists. Furthermore, the reversible agonists include agents like adrophonium, neostigmine, physostigmine, pyridostigmine, rivastigmine, ambinonium, galentamine, tecrine, and dunepazil. In these, adrophonium is a quaternary alcohol while the other drugs are carbamate esters. While here, the irreversible agents include organophosphate compounds like ecotiophate, parathione, melathione, serine, and sumon. Now, let's move to the mechanism of actions of parasympathomimetics. So, as we discussed, a parasympathomimetic agent basically may be a direct acting or indirect acting agent. Direct acting agents interact with cholinergic receptors, which is muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. So, first, we will discuss about the muscarinic agonists here. Well, muscarinic agonists bind to muscarinic receptors only. There are five subtypes of muscarinic receptors, that is, M1, M2, M3, M4, and M5. We have already uploaded a video on cholinergic receptors, so if you are new here, must watch it then for better understanding. So, for now, all muscarinic receptors are G-protein coupled receptors. And once the binding occurs, it results in various intracellular second messengers generation through the activation of IP3 in DAC pathway or inhibition of second messengers by inhibiting adenyl cyclase, which causes final cellular effects. Then, in case of nicotinic agonists, which act on nicotinic cholinoceptors only, which are ligand guided ion channels. And when an agonist binds to it, it results in depolarization of the post synaptic site. In depolarization, nicotinic agonists act on nicotinic cholinoceptors and often enough the ion channels linked with these receptors through which sodium and potassium ions diffuse rapidly down their concentration gradients, which result in depolarization of a neurocell or neuromuscular inflate, which ultimately leads to neurocell excitation or muscle contraction respectively. Depolarizing blockade as a phenomenon that occurs with nicotinic agonists. If nicotinic agonists continually persist and occupy the same nicotinic cholinoceptors for a prolonged period, then it will prevent the electrical recovery or repolarization of the post junctional membrane. That will result in inhibition of postganglionic neurons excitation or firing and contraction of muscle cells. The repolarization is necessary for second time action potential. So, without repolarization, the neurons cannot be excited and muscle cells cannot contract 
and stay relaxed. And that's how the depolarizing blockade occurs. Furthermore, mixed agonists show their actions by binding to both types of cholinoceptors, that is muscarinic as well as nicotinic receptors. After this, we have to discuss the mechanism of action of indirect acting agonists. The actions of acetylcholine released from the autonomic and somatic motor neurons is rapidly terminated because of the enzyme acetylcholine esterase that specifically hydrolyzes acetylcholine to acetate and choline and thus terminates the acetylcholine actions quickly. Acetylcholine esterase is a membrane bound enzyme present in the synopsis. The indirect acting cholinomimetics have their primary effect at the active site of this enzyme and indirectly provide a cholinergic action by preventing the degradation of acetylcholine. This results in an accumulation of acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. Therefore, these drugs can trigger a response at all cholinoceptors. These drugs are divided into two types that is reversible inhibitors of acetylcholine esterase and irreversible inhibitors. The reversible inhibitors bind to the acetylcholine esterase enzyme in such a way that after some time detach from it and leave it to function normally again. These agents do not form a covalent bond for example, the hydrophonium, which form electrostatic and hydrogen bonds with this enzyme and thus hydrophonium dissociate from the enzyme easily. While the carbamate esters like physostigmine and neustigmine form a reversible covalent bond, they break down but with a very slow rate as compared to that of hydrophonium. The hydrophonium inhibit acetylcholine esterase for about 2 to 10 minutes. And that's why used for diagnostic purposes mainly. While the carbamate esters inhibit it for about 30 minutes to 6 hours because of that relative strong covalent bonding. On the other hand, the irreversible agents make a very strong covalent bond with the enzyme. This type of drug receptor interaction results in extremely resistant drug receptor complex. And the drug cannot dissociate from the enzyme to regenerate the free enzyme. This result in a long-lasting increase in acetylcholine at all sites where it is released. Many of these drugs are extremely toxic and were developed by the military as nerve agents such as soman and serine. Other compounds such as parathione and melathione are used as insecticides. In case of insecticide poisoning, friledoxime is a drug which can recover the irreversible enzyme inhibition with these agents. But if given before a process called aging, in which an alkyl group is removed from the drug bonded to the enzyme. Once the alkyl group removal or aging occurs, then friledoxime cannot regenerate the free enzyme.
This condition is only then reversible with the synthesis of a new acetylcholine storage enzyme. The process of aging occurs with the narrow gases very quickly as compared to that of in 